So you've been delving into this for a while. What's your advice to people who are white hat? Um, is it worth them spending time going through that stuff or is it only just like a curiosity? Ooh, super good question. Um, what is my advice for this? Th- I, I would advise anyone that is interested in this and, and wants to kind of see the action as it unfolds. This is one of those ways to do it, but you you kind of have to have a strong stomach. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you might stumble across some things that are really weird, uh, maybe not the most heartening, heartening thing. Uh, a lot of ethically questionable stuff if you're just scrolling around on the dark web. Uh, so avoid that the absolute best you can. Um, but you you can see a little bit more. I don't know if we want to pull up any of those ransomware blog sites between Revil or Black Matter or some of the others. We can certainly do that. That'd be uh, great, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yeah, Revil yeah. will be good. Or any of the ones that you recommend, yeah? So I think one of the more purposeful means or <laughs> reasons to be kind of exploring and lurking over here in these Onion sites is that you can get a little bit of visibility into what's happening for ransomware gangs or ransomware operators. Uh, and we know that there are a ton. Uh, and obviously between a lot of things happening in the news recently, uh, Colonial Pipeline has become a talking point and yeah. standpoint for so many things. JBS Meet, uh, we have the Steamship Authority, we had Kaseya. There were so, so many things uh, between different gangs or different cybercrime syndicates. We've heard of Black Matter, we've heard of Dark Side, we've heard of Revil, we've heard of Ragnar Locker, we've heard of Babook, we've heard of Avedon, we've heard of, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, oftentimes, if you have a ransom note, or if you are a victim of ransomware, and you take a look at the instructions on how to recover your files, quote unquote, they'll tell you, go access this webpage in the dark web or with a .onion site. Uh, and they will communicate with you like a weird support staff <laughs> on, hey, here's how we could get back your files, pay us X million dollars in, in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Uh, alongside that, they typically the ransomware gangs have their own blog or a public presence where they will literally dump all of the data that they've stolen from that victim if that individual, if that organization does not pay, thus holding your data for ransom. So you could see these, You're, they're they're really there. You could download them, you can explore through them, you could see some of the crazy stuff. Uh, and there are a lot of different aspects to it. So I, I have pulled up the homepage of Ragnar Locker and their leaks, their leaks site here. Uh, here's a wall of shame, a permanent list of companies who would like to keep in secret the info leakage, exposing themselves and their customers and partners to even greater risk. I'll scroll down here. But a lot of this, I think we might be able to redact because they are real companies that would have data released. Some of these are announcements that are really, really interesting. Some of them, uh, with Ragnar Locker specifically, they've got a lot of chatter lately in the news where they're saying, hey, if you're a ransomware victim, don't go ask the police to help you. Don't go ask the FBI. Don't try to ask for help from federal agencies because we don't want that and we're just going to make it worse for you. Uh, yeah. We will go ahead and publish all your data if you were to do that stuff. So kind of spooky. <laughs> well, we will find out and we'll punish with all our efforts. <laughs> Man. It's, um, it's, I, I shouldn't laugh. I mean, it's, it's really sad what goes on. <laughs> Some of it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you just have to laugh because like, wow, this, this sounds so absurd. Yeah. Uh, but, we are a team of cybersecurity enthusiasts, crypto punks, entrepreneurs, and ultimately businessmen. <laughs> we want to make a profit. So, so this we can pull up Revil. Yeah, go Revil because Revil is quite popular, isn't it? Or what, I shouldn't say popular. It's quite. Uh, it's been in the news a lot. Yes. Uh, so Revil has what they call Happy Blog, and again, each of these blocks are victims. Uh, so these are people that didn't pay the ransom, so they've published their data, is that right? Yes. You could see a passport right open here. I'll, cl- I'll click on this. All right, that's... <laughs> Sometimes you're like, I don't know. I don't want to look at this anymore. This is just too too insane. Uh, but here's legitimate documents. 
uh, I, I have yet to make a YouTube video where I actually go through and do this because redacting and obscuring it is just going to be awful. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so the happy Black vlog is, is this one that when we when we spoke about, when we did our malware uh, analysis video, we you mentioned this. So this is actually that blog uh, where the stuff yeah. being published, yeah? And Terry, oh, you, yeah, I, go on. When we were chatting about Kaseya, um, I wonder if they have this displayed here still. Oh, here it is. When you and I did a video together discussing uh, the Kaseya ransomware incident, uh, Happy Blog and Revil had posted this update. Uh, and you don't, you don't have to redact this. This is, I think, very well known. Uh, they, they say, hey, on Friday, just the, before the 4th of July holiday in the United States, we launched an attack on a bunch of managed service providers. More than a million systems were infected. I don't know if that's true or not. They might just be, you know, pumping their chest. They might just trying to be all braggadocio, uh, but say, here's our asking price. If you give us $70 million in Bitcoin, we'll give you a public decryptor. Uh, those that have been following the Kasey incident know there's a little bit more to the story now. Um, <laughs> there, there have been some chatter on the decryption key and how folks are recovering, etc. cetera. Uh, but that was certainly a hot topic. And you could literally find this post. You could see this on Revil's blog. And that's what we're doing right now. Because uh, there was legitimate devastation, I think, for, for the Kaseya attack. A lot of organizations thinking they're going out of business. Yeah. Black Matter, this is just another site where they're dumping stuff here. Yeah? Yep. Yep. Black Matter is, is just another ransomware gang. Uh, and this, again, is a list of their victims. <laughs> uh, you can see all the flashy, hey, we've published this data. And if you want to go to the post, Here's what you could download. Here is our 30 gigabytes of data or however much. I could literally click download here and it could start the file transfer. Uh, I have no reason to do that. I don't suggest others do, but I'm telling you it's it's real uh, and you could do it. So. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the story's in the news. I mean, and, it, and that's the important piece about what you're showing here. This stuff is out there and and you're going to show us how easy it is to find this um, because we've discussed malware in the past. We've seen the happy blog now. We've seen these other websites that are on the sort of dark web. It, it's it's actually really sad what happens. I mean, we on the good side don't want this to happen, but it's um, it must be soul destroying for you really because you encounter this all the time with the malware stuff, yeah? Yes. Um, it's funny when I'm asked to kind of have these conversations and do talks and presentations, especially now being a cybersecurity awareness month, uh, I tell folks like, hey, if you're into cybersecurity, awesome. That's incredible. It's a ton of fun. You're going to love it. But man, is it hard work. Uh, lots of late nights, lots of sleepless nights, lots of work in the weekends, trying to respond to incidents where some ransomware actors have just blown up an organization and now leaked all the data online. This being a prime example of that. Uh, it's some that you really have to know the adversary. And I think maybe this is a good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, I, we, we always hammer on this, but you've seen the stuff on the dark web. This is the real, the, the, the real thing. But you advocate always CTFs to, that's how the good guys make sure that they know what they're doing and how they protect organizations, yeah? I think that's a, absolutely a capture the flag in training and uh, learning about this all in different ways is the best thing that you can do to sharpen your own sword and, and make sure that you're in this fight and in the trenches here. Because uh, the more that you expose yourself to, the more that you learn, the more that you understand, the, the better armed you are for when incidents occur. Hey everyone, David Bumble back with John John, you've uh, shared quite a few things in the past. You've spoken about CTFs, you've spoken about malware, but we wanted to change it today. So what are you talking about today? Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, today I thought, well, we've kind of run the gamut of, of things that I could bring to the table or showcase with you. Um, uh, that's but not some... true, man. You've got a wealth of knowledge, <laughs> but you're too humble, but go on. No, one, uh, I think one thing that we could kind of bring to light um, is this whole notion of the, the dark web yep. uh, or... Tor and these Onion Tor hidden services. Um, I think there's a lot of chatter on that, and it, I know it makes for kind of like spicy, oh, sometimes clickbaity content. But uh, I hope to bring out the the real 
like tangible, actual content and, and worthwhile information there. Because as as spooky as it sounds, as kind of creepy as, oh, the dark web, I think there is a lot of really worthwhile education and learning value when we're looking at cybersecurity, uh, real cybercrime, real ransomware gangs and hacker forums. Uh, some of that stuff is real. Some of it's not. Uh, and it'd be cool if we could kind of take a peek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, I'll, I'll preface it with this. You've done a whole series on this. Hi, and welcome back to another YouTube video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That thing is so stupid. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to uh, another YouTube video. I'm excited about this one. I think this one should be a little bit of fun. I want to get started with a uh, new video series. But I want to pitch this from, let's assume we're just starting. So can you explain, you know, what is Tor? What is the dark web? And, and just give us like the foundation and then and show us practically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe I, I might get this definition wrong. Uh, and I'll add that disclaimer. Um, Tor and the Onion router or the Onion kind of network that we're working through um, in this whole idea is really changing the way that you access the internet. Uh, normally you're traffic is routed through your internet service provider, and then it'll have your IP address kind of be communicated and, and known to the remote server or whatever co other computer that you're talking to. Uh, the whole idea behind Tor or this onion router is to kind of layer or take different steps as to how you get out to the internet. Uh, they move all your packets, all your traffic move across through different relays. Uh, and those could be different locations or different ends of the world that bounce your traffic around until eventually it traverses through the exit node or the exit relay. And that is the final like, landing point that will have end up touching the remote server and that IP will be displayed. But your own IP address will be kind of hidden or masked or tucked away uh, and not as readily accessible or well known to that final endpoint, your destination. Yeah, I mean, so you would like download the Tor browser, which is just free software that, um, if I remember originally, one of the um, the, the U.S. Um, three-letter security agencies created the Tor browser, and it's you know just it hides you on the internet, doesn't it? But what we do, what what you're talking about here with the dark web is taking it a step further. Is that right? Yeah. So when you're on or when you're using this Tor network, uh, you have access to a couple different top level domains or TLDs because we're so used to seeing a, a, a google.com or a facebook.com or whatever .org or .net, et cetera, all those different domain names. Um, when you're working through a tour and I guess, and even in some other cases, you could, you could see a .onion domain. And oftentimes those are called tour hidden services because it will try to mask, okay, where that's being hosted from and how it's being served. A lot of really interesting conversations and chatter <laughs> and services can go on on those Tor hidden services or dot onion websites. Uh, a lot of privacy information. If, if folks are in that realm, they, they just want to be secure. They want to be anonymous all online. Uh, oftentimes, you'll be in that dot onion realm. Yeah, I mean, the um, sorry, the famous one that I remember from a few years ago was Silk Road. Um, yeah. There was an American, was he Canadian or American? I can't remember. A chap who he was selling all kinds of, um, how should we put it, not so legal substances and stuff. And um, right, he had exactly. like, a, it was like an eBay type site, isn't it? That was selling all kinds of nonsense. Um, and that was on the dark web. So, what's the difference between the dark web and, say, a like a standard google.com website? Yeah, so there are uh, different distinctions between the dark web and the deep web, and yeah. I guess what folks sometimes hear as clearnet or how you think, how you traditionally think of the internet. You get into Facebook.com, you get into your bank, your website, whatever, um, and I think that is one of the most defining differences. Hey, if you're looking at dot onion links, you may very well be on how you could classify the dark web or the deep web. Uh, I think that that term, that name, the dark web is so silly. <laughs> it, it has a little bit more of like a, a sure, some spooky m mystique to it. Uh, but I, I tend to refer to it as like the kind of the corners and the crevices of the internet because it is still the internet. Uh, it's just kind of accessed in a different way. 
Yeah, so how do I, I mean, can, perhaps you should, it'll be easy if you just show us practically, but how do I, sure. how do I get access to this? Like, let's say I'm curious um, and I want to try this at home. Well, I shouldn't try this at home. Is that is that the warning? But let's say I want well, to, yeah. <laughs> go on. <laughs> I, I always offer the cheesy disclaimer that I know doesn't hold a lot of water, but hey, when we're talking about this stuff, it is totally for education's sake. Yeah. Uh, it's to shine the spotlight on this stuff and look, hey, it's real. It, this thing really does exist, but by no means should you want to go out on the dark web or buy whatever illicit things or hire a hacker and some of the crazy shenanigans that aren't always legal. I Absolutely not a proponent of that. Absolutely yep. not what we're doing here. Uh, so I got to lay that out first. <laughs> yeah, but it's important to know that it exists. I mean, it's um, totally. It, if you don't, we, we we've said this a thousand times. If you don't know about it, how can you protect companies against it? Um, you, you need to be aware of this stuff. So, John, I don't know if you want to talk more about the theory, or do you just want to jump into a demo and show us? You know, yeah, how to access I'd be this love, stuff. I, I would love. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, show you a little bit of a demo. I don't know how much we could do. Uh, but I will go ahead and share my screen if that's totally all right. Yeah. So I am currently in a virtual machine for Tails Linux. Um, Tails Linux is one of those very, very privacy oriented and uh, security, like security built with security in mind to be able to use a computer and then have it really be amnesic. I think that might be the right way to define it. Uh, but it has amnesia and the, the sense, okay, if you were to turn off this computer, none of the changes that you made while you were using it will retain. Uh, Tails is typically meant to be used as a Linux distribution and operating system that should be booted from a live USB or yep. live CD. Uh, it's not really intended to be a virtual machine. Uh, and, and I've gotten a little bit of flack for that <laughs> because, <laughs> hey, there are plenty of other options. You could be using Cubes OS or Hunix or some other different variations. Uh, I'm still just kind of dipping my toes in the water. So right now I've just been playing with, with Tails uh, and getting to learn and know this a little bit better. But, so you, you're running this in a VM, are you? I am currently, yes. And isn't this the one that Snowden uses? Is that right? Uh, I'm not positive. I think on the homepage it does actually have some Nice testimonial from him or something. So if I scroll down here, uh, here's a good recommended by, and there's our man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you, this is just adding layers to protect you. So you, you, you don't want to try this kind of stuff on your live um, main work desk or work, how, how do you say, your, your, main, your main computer? Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen some web browsers like Brave. I think Brave will actually go ahead and, and yeah. properly route an, an onion or dot onion website and domain for you. Uh, but typically, again, I just try to like to keep these things as distinctly separate as possible in the same way that, oh, we used a virtual machine to explore malware, or if we used a virtual machine to test like Windows domains, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever you possibly can, I think it's great to compartmentalize out to a virtual machine. And does Tails come with Tor pre-installed, is that right? Yes. Uh, in fact, you can see that we're using the Tor browser right here. Uh, I have a little icon over in the top right where you could kind of figure out, hey, what are all the relays that you're actually bouncing through when you look through different kinds of circuits uh, that will be displayed as as over here. And you could get a little bit more intel and information on those if you'd like. But I'll just say this. You don't have to use Tor on Tails. You could just Correct. run Tor um, on Windows or Linux or something else. But I like your idea of like separating separating your stuff so that it's not all yeah. together. And yeah, I use Brave and Brave definitely nice. has Tor built in. It's a great browser. Yep. Sorry, go on. No, um, and I think that gums gets to the gist of it. Uh, Tails and Tor is one great way that we could kind of start to explore what might be out there on the dark web. Uh, and again, putting that dark web in air quotes. <laughs> One thing that I think is a, is a worthwhile learning point for folks is that there is like an equivalent of Google or Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine you might fancy. There is an equivalent in this dot onion hidden services realm. Uh, very interesting because then it might allow you to search for other dot onion or Tor hidden services websites. Kind of neat because 
it, I think it poses the question, hey, if these things are meant to be hidden, how do you find them? Yeah. <laughs> how do you track them down? So I, mean, so I, uh, I, I, I want to ask the dumb questions or the, yeah. the, the novice questions, if you prefer. Um, so you started Tor. How did you get to this page? Is there like a, does it start immediately when you boot it up or how do you, how do you totally. get to this page? So if I were to move over to the applications within Tor, uh, or within Tails, sorry, you can see one of the suggested ones is the Tor browser. Uh, that'll automatically pop up, uh, bringing you right to the Tails homepage. Uh, that will be the default, but if you wanted to create a new tab and go to a different location, you totally could, but you would need to know the address for that specific Onion site or the Tor hidden service that you wanted to go to. Uh, now that's not going to be a google.com or a facebook.com, but it looks like a very, very long and obscure kind of esoteric big long link of random letters and different things. I actually tend to keep a list of, hey, what other links, what other Tor hidden services could I reach out to and access? Because without knowing what they are, you won't know what they are. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you went to that like sort of um, search engine website. Is that like just one of these crazy links that you have to find somewhere? Uh, yes, here, I'll see if I can uh, bring this over super quick. So I tend to try and keep a dump of uh, potential onion links that you might be able to access. Uh, really, again, these are things that you would kind of have to find and, and keep track of on your own. If you, want, or if you were just getting started and trying to explore this, you could categorize whatever you're interested in learning about or seeing or tracking down. Uh, this is a, just a big long pile that I tend to use for my own series or, or videos. But uh, it's interesting where folks might suggest like, oh, John, I remember you were looking for different search engines. Well, you could try to use maybe some in this link. And here's one called Excavator. But as you can see, this is some long basically nonsense domain, kind of very hard to memorize or remember like a facebook.com or a google.com. So once you have that noted, we could go try and access that specific page through Tor. I just want to ask you, so on your series, on your YouTube channel, and again, I always recommend that everyone go and have a look at John's channel. You go through this in a bit more detail, is that right? You've got all the links listed, is that right? So if someone's off to- uh, A bit, a yes. Bit, yeah? uh, okay. First, we, we start out in the clear net. We start out with our own basic Google searches. And then we try to see, hey, what have other people known as decent search engines in Tor or, or things that look for other .onion websites? Um, and then we start to build our own list. And then we start to explore <laughs> different websites through those search engines. Uh, so a lot of those are, are, are worthwhile to do, but you really have to build out your own repertoire of things. Okay, so you, we've we found a search engine link, and from here we can try and find websites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are a ton of these. I will say, uh, I am a usual fan of of Amia, which was kind of that first one that we saw us on. Uh, there are others between Excavator that we just saw. Uh, I am unsure if these will all end up being uh, safe for work. Right? Sometimes you never yeah. know what you're going to stumble across. Uh, stumble up, uh, across. Over on the dark web, there could be crazy advertisements. There could be strange pop-ups. Uh, a lot of folks recommend, hey, turn off JavaScript so that your browser won't go to different locations or, or drive and do different things. Uh, but again, you could literally see some strange, strange stuff. Uh, may not always be appropriate, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so warning about the sites. Um, can you go back to that original web browser? I, I didn't want, sorry, I, I threw you kind of like a, a curveball there. Um, oh, no worries. Which one do you want to start with, John? I'm just um, trying to think, okay, so I've got a, you using Tails as the browser, sorry, as the operating system. I could use a, another operating system like um, Ubuntu or uh, Kali or something and just boot that up. Um, and now I've got Tor, which I could download and install for free or it comes as part of Tails. Um, now the next step is I go to this link and let's say this this web browser, sorry, this search engine. Now, how do I find something? Yeah, um, so personally, I think the most interesting aspect of looking and, and kind of lurking around in the, in the dark web is to potentially get some more intel 
on what other cybercrime is going on in the world right now. Uh, hey, company X or YZ was hacked or someone got hit with ransomware or there's a new malware strain. Uh, is that being shared around on some forums? Are people talking about this? Uh, there's a lot of chatter on that. So uh, I like to super easy, absolutely super simple, search for different things that you might be interested in or want to learn more about in that search engine. Uh, again, you might see some strange results. You might not even get results that you're looking for, but you can at least fall down the rabbit hole a little bit. Uh, I am <laughs> not sure what we'll see, but a lot of things are really interesting because you could see, oh, do you want to hire a professional hacker? Do you want to purchase this custom-made ransomware? Do you want to look for fully undetectable stuff? And I don't know whether all of it is true, right? We're not to say some of this is legitimate. Very well, some could be a scam. Uh, but it's kind of crazy to look through and, and, and crazy to see, right? So where should we go, David? Do we want to kind of explore some <laughs> hire a hacker? Or? Yeah, let's let's hire a hacker. Come on. <laughs> well, we, we won't right. do it for real, but let's see what we can find. Right, right. Is that one of the interesting ones that you found in your sort of investigations? Yeah, I think it's silly uh, that a lot of folks kind of offer this or, or put it out there. Um, here are some, okay, quote, hacker for hire, dark social network. Here's a hacker for hire. Hire a hacker to change grades. And again, <laughs> change your school totally. Grade. It's funny, I, I, you probably get this every day. I get to constantly, David, please hack my school website. <laughs> David, please, I failed my exam. Can you hack my university so that you can change my grades? It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, we, I won't do that and neither will you, but um, it's interesting <laughs> that people offer those services. And again, I don't want anyone that watches this video who is thinking, hey, let's, uh, let's change my grades. Uh, don't go out and track this down. You won't want to do this. It's It's very well not legitimate. I think this one is a well-known rent a hacker webpage that is, uh, I, I think a lot of folks have seen this if they've been kind of interested in this, but of course, hey, we'll take payment in cryptocurrency, right? Whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Monero, that's a whole nother world in itself. Um, yeah, and, I and can I mean, go to the homepage. And it's guaranteed that they're going to do the job once you pay them, yeah? It's so funny. Uh, some folks will say, hey, we offer 24-7 support. We guarantee satisfaction. <laughs> we, uh, we're the best around. It's so crazy to think of, uh, I don't know, the sales and marketing <laughs> that goes into this. Again, whether it's real or not, but one, uh, one sobering thought is that may, maybe some of the cyber criminals do a better job of advertising yeah. than us good guys do, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So in your, like in your investigation, did you find it like fairly underwhelming or was it like uh, really exciting what you discovered? Um, I think it, it, it varies between do, does this hold water? You know, does this look real? Does this look very fake? Um, is there anything that we could particularly see or, because if you see some of these products, if you were to buy them, quote unquote, hey, buy a hacked credit card or a hacked PayPal account uh, or whatever other illicit things you might see off on the side. Uh, it's funny when some of them have these quote unquote testimonials or ratings <laughs> or, or user comments, right? And you're like, wow, this is supposed to be the Amazon for the underground syndicates. This is supposed to be eBay or Craigslist for criminals. Uh, and those are just kind of silly sometimes. So you've shown us like hide a, hire a hacker. Is that, is, is, did you, did you um, think you were saying offline, there's this sort of marketplaces like eBay and, and is this what we're looking at at the moment, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I'm over here on quote unquote best market, <laughs> which is <laughs> very silly in my mind. You could see kind of if we were to load the homepage, this cheesy animation to say, oh, the best hackers platform. And quote unquote, allegedly, hey, here's a deal. Here's a quick 10% discount. Uh, <laughs> and you could get uh, a Bitcoin hijacker. Here's some malware. Here's some counterfeit money or private keys or access to different credit cards. Uh, I see a lot of conversation in the, the word fulls, uh, F-U-L-L-Z. Uh, oftentimes I hear fulls as like, hey, full information 
on some person, like a full background report, hey, where they live, uh, who their family is, what their phone number is, their social security, etc. cetera. Uh, strange, silly things, right? Okay, so I could hire a hacker here, hopefully, perhaps, maybe. Um, I remember on your series, you were, you, were, you, you were comparing like different websites and it looked like the same guy, but you could just get him at different prices. You just had to like shop around. Um, could I buy a DDoS? Because I always get asked like, can I get a DDoS? And I, again, we're not recommending that anyone try this. Um, we just want to show you that it's supposedly available on these websites. So could you yeah. buy like a hack or hire a hacker, buy a DDoS, that type of thing? Allegedly, right? And again, uh, I haven't gone through and, and made this purchase, so I don't know. <laughs> but there are, of course, advertisements for this or that or anything strictly particular. Here's a WhatsApp hacking uh, for, hey, the ripe price of 140 to 180 dollars, or social media hacking, email, website bypassing, two-factor authentication, ransomware, and here's our DDoS attack. Uh, hey, <laughs> what is it? A hundred to two hundred dollars? Supposedly, crazy, I don't know, but these advertisements are things, whether or not they're real or not, whether or not it's a scam, some folks might fall for this if it is or it isn't. So. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. So this is not the career path we advocating. We advocating protecting against this nonsense, but this is a good example of actually what's out there, um, that guys are selling their services and it was very, very easy for you to find this once you knew the links. I suppose that's the hard part is um, I, I run Tails or some operating system. I have Tor and then it's an onion link. That's the domain name rather than .com. And then I just find these links somewhere. Um, how do you, you, you said you found these links by people giving them to you or did you just fumble around and, on some of these so-called search engines and find things? Yeah. Truthfully, I would fumble around in, in some of these search engines um, and the more collection of, of search engines that you might have, the more you might easily be able to look for. Uh, not all of it could very well be appropriate. I think I see a couple that are very off-putting, right? We can, <laughs> we can get off that. Uh, same thing with plenty of others. Yep. That's the fine line. That's the absolute risk that you would run. Um, don't do don't do this at school. Don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> don't do this at work. Um, this is not the this is um, not the not the right stuff to show. Yeah. So here, if I were to use Amia again as a search engine and say I wanted to look for malware, uh, maybe this could be folks advertising theirs, their their custom made malware that they've written about, or they're discussing things that would be in on the news, uh, things like that. Uh, here's a so, so strange one. Yeah, John, you you big in the malware space because that's your day job. Um, yes. Have you found malware that you have found in the, like in the wild for sale here? So, do does it has it helped you in your job or has it helped you like sort of get code stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Um, I wish I could find a, a good or new off the top of my head, a, a good forum that would kind of showcase this sort of thing, because there are a lot of bulletin boards or forums where folks get together and say, hey, this is my cool new remote access Trojan. This is my cool new command and control framework. Uh, this is like I've made this fully undetectable. It bypasses whatever antivirus or endpoint detection response. Uh, and then if folks chat about the news or what's going on in the real world, maybe you'll have some of the ransomware gangs pipe in and say, <laughs> in a weird, strange way, put their like their flag in the ground and say, this was us. We, we claim that horrible, crazy thing that we did. Uh, there is a very, very well-known um, shady Russian hacker forum called XSS.is. Um, and it is all in a language that I can't read, of course. So you might have to run it through a translator. Um, and there's others between exploit.in. Um, but exploit.in is pay to play. Uh, XSS, you would need a actual username to move in and, and work around in the forums and read the posts. Uh, truthfully, I do have one, but I, I guess I won't burn that and display that out. <laughs> 
Did, are, the, are those available only on the Tor network, or are they publicly available Ag on standard uh, XSS.is. The, these are not strictly in Tor. This one is ClearNet. Okay. You could go open your Chrome web browser and go straight here if you wanted to. So, I mean, these guys aren't... aren't they blatantly just showing what's... Well, I mean, you, you've got to get an account, but um, that, that that's available in the normal, as we call it, clear net, just the standard internet. Um, Correct. But a lot of these pl these forums aren't available there. You have to go through the Tor network. John, what's sort of the craziest thing you've, you've kind of come across? Ooh. In the, in the tech space or in the morality, ethically questionable space? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. So what, what was like the most interesting thing to you personally? Let's put it that way. Like you would say, oh, I'm surprised this is here or I'm surprised they're selling this. Oh, uh, so one of the craziest things in my mind is the, the recent, the link that we were just looking at, the XSS.is and some of those hacker forums yeah. Uh, oftentimes on those websites, there is a, a specific segment of the forums that might be called the, the people's court or the hacker's court. And it's such a strange thing because it's a, it's a space for users to write a little bit of a complaint and say, oh, wow. hey, this other member, he ripped me off or he stole money from me or he didn't go through with the hack when he promised me that he would. And it's a weird sort of like code of conduct for criminals. <laughs> wow. it's, it's a weird sort of a, yeah, hacker's court and the, the judicial system where you could have your day with the, with a jury and see if folks will help right the wrongs against you. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I mean, they, so in the community of hackers, there's sort of this like, oh, you can't even call it that, but like, like you said, code of conduct or some kind of ethics, supposedly. Yeah where they hold each other accountable. Um, Let me... You did a whole series on this. I mean, it, it, it sounds like it's, it's actually, it was quite difficult to put it together, John, because it's like, rather than just going through and purchasing a hacker for hire, what are, you can just show the websites a bit. There's not really too much more than that. Is that right? Yeah, so truthfully, when you're asking about the um, series that I had put together, I always kind of mentally struggle with putting that out because yeah. I think from the from the viewer's perspective or for someone watching this, it's really not all that interesting. It It's sort of just spectating and going on the safari ride and you point at all these weird animals in the zoo or something. Like, wow, look at how crazy this is. Uh, I'm not going to go touch it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go interact with it. Uh, but it's weird that it's out there. So... I hope that there's still some value in seeing that, but I agree. I haven't gotten yet to the point where, hey, let's send some Bitcoin to some <laughs> supposed criminal and let's see if they give me any any payload that could run or do something. I don't. I haven't tried it yet, but you'll have to. We'll have to get you back potential. when you when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you showed us earlier this Russian website and offline. You told me that we could perhaps look at that. Is that right? Yeah. So. I am accessing, once again, uh, that xss.is hacker forum. Um, this is in Google Translator right now. So the, the Russian language is being translated uh, in English so that I can make a better sense of it and kind of understand a little bit better. But you could see all the different chatter and see some of the posts and communication as, as recent as today or yesterday or Saturday, etc. cetera. Uh, a lot of different discussions. Hey, what if you are writing your own malware or you're programming or developing in, in different languages? Uh, if you want to be chatting about the news, some of the recent things that could be happening between ransomware, decryption keys, etc., or proof of concept for different CVEs or vulnerabilities. Uh, I'll scroll down until we can get to some interesting stuff. Of course, marketplace idea, whether you're selling access to companies or whether you're selling malware etc uh, but here's our people's court odd <laughs> enough and there is a complaint it says hey have you been deceived or thrown you can write here we'll get things sorted out if the facts of this game is proven the person gets the ripper status and is added to the blacklist so you'll be publicly punished and shamed for this sort of thing uh 
So here we're checking out the complaints in the people's court. And here's a little craziness here. We're throwing some individual because they're hiding and waiting for something. Or this one ripped me off. Here's a scammer. Here are some other bad people. Uh, any of these that we're interested in? Any one that we should take a look at, David? <laughs> So is that a $20,000 someone ripped him off? Oh, this one here, you think? Yeah. I don't know. It has 16 responses. So someone got banned. I'll go ahead and click on this. All right. Now, again, looking through this post, this is a translation of the original language. So it might not be readable. There might be a lot of random different words that aren't what was originally displayed in the language, but it looks like here's some conversations about virus total or finding some payload or, or, or malware. Um, and a lot of chatter, this being some violation, supposedly. We can see if we were to scroll down what other people had said. Goodness. <laughs> Very, <laughs> this is where our language translation is really hurting us. The music <laughs> played for a short time. Okay. <laughs> you use it, but it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Interesting. Yeah. So, someone, well, we're not quite sure exactly what happened, but someone got banned. So, basically, they, yep. uh, they did some arbitration and, and someone was affected through the complaints court or whatever, whatever it is. Yep. So, John, have you found like um, like solar winds hacks or anything that that you were surprised on the, on that website, or was it like just a free for all? Yeah, if you dig through a lot of the malware marketplaces, um, you can find other utilities. You can find other uh, frameworks or tools that folks might put out there into the world, and it is surprising to me how many of it is kind of a, a rip. <laughs> a ripoff or yeah. kind of a portion <laughs> of other built well-known open source remote access Trojans and command and control frameworks and just sort of shilled as someone else's product. It, it's a strange, weird world uh, in that, in those syndicates because uh, sometimes it could be very, very clever and very, very cool novel payloads and exploitation techniques. But sometimes it's, Oh, Oh, this is just a, a off the wall mock-up or skin of, of something else. Yeah, you, you don't expect uh, uh, thieves to be honest. So, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what do you expect? I mean, it's exactly right. Um, so you've been delving into this for a while. What's your advice to people who are white hat? Um, is it worth them spending time going through that stuff or is it only just like a curiosity? Ooh, super good question. Um, what is my advice for this? Th <laughs> I, I would advise anyone that is interested in this and, and wants to kind of see the action as it unfolds, this is one of those ways to do it, but you you kind of have to have a strong stomach. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you might stumble across some things that are really weird, uh, maybe not the most heartening, heartening thing, uh, a lot of ethically questionable stuff if you're just scrolling around on the dark web. Uh, so avoid that the absolute best you can. Um, but you, you can see a little bit more. I don't know if we want to pull up any of those ransomware blog sites between Revil or Black Matter or some of the others. We can certainly do that. That'd be uh, great. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Revil yeah. will be good. Or any of the ones that you recommend. Yeah. So I think one of the more purposeful means or <laughs> reasons to be kind of exploring and lurking over here in these onion sites is that you can get a little bit of visibility into what's happening for ransomware gangs or ransomware operators. Uh, and we know that there are a ton. Uh, and obviously between a lot of things happening in the news recently, uh, Colonial Pipeline has become a talking point and yeah. standpoint for so many things. JBS Meet, uh, we have the Steamship Authority, we had Kaseya. There were so, so many things uh, between different gangs or different cybercrime syndicates. We've heard of Black Matter, we've heard of Dark Side, we've heard of Revil, we've heard of Ragnar Locker, we've heard of Babook, we've heard of Avedon, we've heard of, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, oftentimes, if you have a ransom note, or if you are 
a victim of ransomware and you take a look at the instructions on how to recover your files, quote unquote, they'll tell you, go access this web page in the dark web or with the dot onion site. Uh, and they will communicate with you like a weird support staff <laughs> on, hey, here's how we could get back your files, pay us X million dollars in, in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Uh, alongside that, they typically the ransomware gangs have their own blog or a public presence where they will literally dump all of the data that they've stolen from that victim if that individual, if that organization does not pay, thus holding your data for ransom. So you could see these, You're, they're, they're really there. You could download them, you can explore through them, you could see some of the crazy stuff. Uh, and there are a lot of different aspects to it. So I, I have pulled up the homepage of Ragnar Locker and their leaks, their leaks site here. Uh, here's a wall of shame, a permanent list of companies who would like to keep in secret the info leakage, exposing themselves and their customers and partners to even greater risk. I'll scroll down here, but a lot of this I think we might be able to redact because they are real companies that would have data released. Some of these are announcements that are really, really interesting. Some of them uh, with Ragnar Locker specifically, they've got a lot of chatter lately in the news where they're saying, hey, if you're a ransomware victim, don't go ask the police to help you. Don't go ask the FBI. Don't try to ask for help from federal agencies because we don't want that and we're just going to make it worse for you. Uh, yeah. We will go ahead and publish all your data if you were to do that stuff. So kind of spooky. <laughs> well, we will find out. And we'll punish with all our efforts, <laughs> man. It's um, it's I I shouldn't laugh. I mean, it's it's really sad what goes on. <laughs> Some of it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you just have to laugh because like, wow, this this sounds so absurd. Yeah. Uh, but we are a team of cybersecurity enthusiasts, crypto punks, entrepreneurs, and ultimately businessmen. <laughs> we want to make a profit. So, so this we is could pull up Revil. Yeah, go Revil, because Revil is quite popular, isn't it? Or well, I shouldn't say popular, it's quite, uh, it's been in the news a lot. Yes, uh, so Revil has what they call Happy Blog. And again, each of these blocks are victims. Uh, so these are people that didn't pay the ransom, so they've published their data, is that right? Yes, you could see a passport right open here. I'll, cl I'll click on this. All right, that's, <laughs> sometimes you're like, I don't know, I don't want to look at this anymore. This is just too, too insane. Uh, but here's legitimate documents. Uh, I, I have yet to make a YouTube video where I actually go through and do this because redacting and obscuring it is just going to be awful. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so the happy Black blog is, is this one that when we, when we spoke about, when we did our malware uh, analysis video, we, you mentioned this. So this is actually that blog uh, where the stuff yeah. being published, yeah? And Terry, oh, yeah, you, I, go on. When we were chatting about Kaseya, um, I wonder if they have this displayed here still. Oh, here it is. When you and I did a video together discussing uh, the Kaseya ransomware incident, uh, Happy Blog and Revil had posted this update. Uh, and you don't, you don't have to redact this. This is, I think, very well known. Uh, they, they say, hey, on Friday, just the, before the 4th of July holiday in the United States, we launched an attack on a bunch of managed service providers. More than a million systems were infected. I don't know if that's true or not. They might just be, you know, pumping their chest. They might just trying to be all braggadocio, uh, but say, here's our asking price. If you give us $70 million in Bitcoin, we'll give you a public decryptor. Uh, those that have been following the Kasey incident know there's a little bit more to the story now. Um, <laughs> there, there have been some chatter on the decryption key and how folks are recovering, etc. cetera. Uh, but that was certainly a hot topic. And you could literally find this post. You could see this on Revil's blog. And that's what we're doing right now. So give us the update. Did you, um, did they, what happened with the Kaseya since we did our interview, John? Um, I believe the, a uh, decryption key was brought to light and it was not disclosed originally how it was not mentioned what third party provided this this savior magic decryption key universal decryptor um i think 
maybe as early as last week or a little bit ago, now there are other stories saying, hey, we this was retrieved by a federal agency. Why didn't so-and-so agency give this to us earlier? Because yeah. the decryption key came in like three weeks after the incident. Uh, so it's still, I think, a little bit of disgruntlement, uh, still some salt in the wounds on, on that, because uh, there was legitimate devastation, I think, for, for the Kaseya attack. A lot of organizations thinking they're going out of business. Yeah. Black Matter, this is just another site where they're dumping stuff here. Yep, yep. Black Matter is, is just another ransomware gang. Uh, and this, again, is a list of their victims. <laughs> uh, you can see all the flashy, hey, we've published this data. And if you want to go to the post, here's what you could download. Here is our 30 gigabytes of data or however much. I could literally click download here and it could start the file transfer. Uh, I have no reason to do that. I don't suggest others do, but I'm telling you, it's it's real uh, and you could do it. So. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the story's in the news. I mean, and, and that's the important piece about what you're showing here. This stuff is out there and, and you're gonna show us how easy it is to find this um, because We've discussed malware in the past. We've seen the happy blog now. We've seen these other websites that are on the sort of dark web. Um, it, it's it's actually really sad what happens. I mean, we on the good side don't want this to happen, but it's um, it must be soul destroying for you really because you encounter this all the time with the malware stuff, yeah? It, it, yes. Um, it's funny when I'm asked to kind of have these conversations and do talks and presentations especially now being a cybersecurity awareness month, uh, I tell folks like, hey, if you're into cybersecurity, awesome. That's incredible. It's a ton of fun. You're going to love it. But man, is it hard work. Uh, lots of late nights, lots of sleepless nights, lots of work in the weekends trying to respond to incidents where some ransomware actors have just blown up an organization and now leaked all the data online. This being a prime example of that. Uh, it's some that you really have to know the adversary, and I think maybe this is a good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, I, we, we always hammer on this, but you've seen the stuff on the dark web. This is the real, the, the, the real thing. But you advocate always CTFs to, that's how the good guys make sure that they know what they're doing and how they protect organizations, yeah? I think that's a, absolutely a capture the flag in training and... Uh, Learning about this all in different ways is the best thing that you can do to sharpen your own sword and, and make sure that you're in this fight and in the trenches here. Because uh, the more that you expose yourself to, the more that you learn, the more that you understand, the, the better armed you are for when incidents occur. So John, tell me, I want to I become like you. I want to get into this game. You've obviously had a really rough year. I mean, you, you've had it tough. Would you still recommend someone young or someone old, doesn't matter, get into this field? Or are you getting tired of it already? <laughs> oh, such a such a pointed question. <laughs> I'm being um, nasty. No, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like if you could go back in time, would you would you follow the same path? Or like, would you say to your younger self, you know what, it's just too much work? I think no matter what, this field is extremely fulfilling uh, yeah. because you can see the difference in however way in whatever way how little how small how great how big uh I, doing this sort of work you really do uh, you're, you're fighting against real threats i think sometimes that gets lost in translation yeah. especially even for me because i talk about how we like to gamify things we do these red versus blue exercise we do these tabletop role-playing games but when you pull the curtain back on the dark web and you see these real things, these real threats, these real adversaries, uh, it, it, it's not a game anymore. And yeah. that's something that we got to take really seriously because they are real adversaries uh, and real devastation could come from incidents in cybercrime. I think that's important. I'm glad you said that because it, when, when you become a cybersecurity professional and we want to be the good guys, you are you're literally saving people a lot of pain. I mean, some of the stuff you showed me, and I won't mention it too much, but a lot of that was confidential, like a, a passport information, stuff like that. 
you're going to save people a lot of pain if you can protect companies against that. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's real. It's not a game. I don't know if you've seen some of the recent news, um, but there was some chatter. Hey, when when ransomware hits a hospital, you yeah. know, it, it suddenly becomes a real matter of, of life and death. Uh, and you can see in some of those leaks that we literally got to see, you mentioned confidential data, cool, legal documents, medical documents, sensitive personal information, uh, now out and available uh, because some bad actors thought they wanted to make some money. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned hospitals. I mean, the NHS here in the UK, they a lot yeah. of the hospitals were shut down and that has can have the, the consequences that people die. It's not a game. Um, and I think, I, I want to say this as an inspiration for people who want to get into this on the good side. You are doing a good job. Those late nights are worth it if you're protecting companies because you get to do something that's really interesting. I mean, John, you're a, great, a shining example of this. You do stuff that's really interesting, but there's a, I don't, I don't want to make it all philosophical, but there's there's a bigger purpose to this because you're protecting people. And I mean, a lot of that has real, real consequences. Absolutely. So yeah, no kudos to you. John, really appreciate you sharing this. Um, thanks for like, as you said in the beginning, you you know, you've pulled back the veil, if you like, um, showing us what's actually happening. Um, Thanks so much for, you know, for sharing your knowledge. Thanks so much for going on the safari ride with me. You know, there's a lot to explore, uh, but I think it, it really does have some value and there's a lot of education to bring. So, you know, I just want to say this again. I mean, John, on your website, sorry, on your YouTube channel, you've covered a lot of this in a lot more detail, yeah? Yeah, so I've done a, what I call a dark web documentary series, which is yeah. very similar to this style. Uh, it's sort of a discovery-based video where, I don't always know exactly where I'm going, just kind of stumbling along and looking through different Onion sites and seeing what's out there, whether it's a scam, whether it's legitimate, whether it's a real threat, whether it's malware or what have you. Um, it's, it's just bringing to light all that could be kind of buried beneath here. So.